Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Some witchy decor is on the agenda. Let's get into it. With my scroll saw, I cut my witch hat and boots from MDF. This is such a simple yet fun piece. I'll base coat all three pieces with two coats of ceram coat charcoal. Using Mod Podge, I'll fix this cute striped band to the hat. First I apply a coat to the hat, then to the back of the paper. I'll roll it with my brayer to make sure there's a good contact, and then I'll give it a top coat. I've also cut some details for the boots from the striped paper. I love black and white in general, but especially for Halloween. A little embellishment for the heels and also for the front of the boot. And I'll give those a top coat too. Now my favorite part painting the details. I'll use some floating medium and ceram coat black to shade. So I prep my brush with floating medium. I'll get a really good healthy coat on there and then I'll scoop up some paint onto the corner of my brush. To load the paint into the bristles and to blend it with the medium, I'll stroke my brush on my plate. This will spread the paint about halfway across the bristles toward the middle of the brush. This gives the paint a fade, darkest at the corner of my brush and fading as it moves toward the center. I'll pull in here so you can get a better look. I start along the side of the band and I'll follow the edge of the hat, reloading my brush as needed. I shade along the outside of the band too. You can see I'm just following the natural shape of the hat. And now around the brim. I also shade on the inside of the band. I really want this to have a rustic bohemian vibe. I'll shade the boots in the same way. I feel like this adds a bit of age to the piece. It softens the hard lines and adds interest. Just following the shape of the boot. Just like with the hat band, I'll shade both the inside and outside of the paper. I switch to a smaller brush to get into the inside since it's a much smaller area. And you can see it really softens the edge of that paper. Okay, as you may know, I like to layer my colors when I shade and or highlight. So I'm coming in with some hippo gray now, prepping the brush the same way. First into the floating medium, then side load the paint. I lay the color just inside the black shading. I don't want to cover the black. I want to enhance it with the hippo. The hippo is a lighter shade of gray, so it highlights the area.
adding some definition to the bumps and creases of the hat. And of course, the band will get the same treatment, both inside and outside the paper. Moving right along the brim, you can see that it adds that soft highlight. I repeat this on both boots. I pretty much follow the same lines as I did with the black. I really think everyone should give Floating Medium a try. It's such a fun product to use. I use it almost every time I paint. I just think it adds such a softness to my strokes. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? You don't like it? That's okay. Give it another try. And to add a smidge of color, I'll shade with Spice Pumpkin, again, just inside the hippo this time. This adds that pop of color, but still maintains a rustic feel. Don't you think it adds something? I really think it brings the piece an extra element. bringing that spiced pumpkin to the boots now. If you didn't want to use an orange color, purple, or maybe even like an acid green would be really cool too. And now, I'll spray my pieces with clear matte sealer. I'll drill holes first at the top of the hat for the hanger, then the bottom and the boots so I can connect them to the hat. I'll drill four holes where the boot laces will go. I'll string a length of twine using some paddle wire as a needle through the lace holes. I'll pull one end of the string through I need to use my needle nose here to pull through because that wire kept slipping out of my fingers. So you can see, I have one lace on either side of the boot. Now, I'll thread one end through the next hole from the front. And I'll thread the other end through the same hole from the rear.
And I just continue on until all four holes have laces. And I'll tie it like a regular old shoelace, but before I make the loops, I'll wire on a rusty jingle bell. I slip the wire under the lace and twist it into place, and I'll cut off any extra wire. Tie my bow so the bell is right in the center, and then I'll trim the laces. I wrap the hat band with twine as well. I go around twice, tie it off in the back. I'm all thumbs today, so I am. I'm just trying to get it somewhat centered. Yeah, the struggle was real. Just cutting off that excess. A twine bow. I wrap it around my fingers a couple times, tie the center with a piece of twine, and I'll set that aside for a moment. I have three pitberry branches that'll twist together at the bottom. These have the jingle bells on them. Cute. Just curling the ends here. I tuck them under the twine on the hat band and I glue them in place with fabric glue. You can use hot glue, but if this goes on a front door and the sun hits it, it could melt the hot glue. So that's why I'm using fabric glue. I'm using fabric glue for long term, hot glue for the quick grab so I can move on with my project. Love it. It has such an organic feel. Love it. To make the hanger, I'll wrap a length of 19 gauge wire around a paint bottle, crossing the wire right against the bottle, and I'll twist all the way down. I want the hanger to be long because I'm adding a bow with tails at the top. I leave a couple inches open at the bottom so I can push it through the hole at the top of the hat, and I twist the wire around itself on the back. I've cut two more lengths of wire to attach the boots to the hat. I push the wire through the back because I like to make a little decorative curl on the front with the wire. For my bow, I'll wrap the ribbon around itself twice. I love this ribbon. I got this from burlapfabric.com, I think. I'll fold the ribbon in half and I make two small snips in the center of the ribbon where the chenille stem will go. It makes it a little less bulky and easier to pinch the center. fluff the loops. I've cut a separate piece of ribbon for the tails and I'll twist them to the back.
To hide the chenille stem, I'll cover the center with a small strip of ribbon. I dovetail the tails of the bow. I'll tie the bow to the top of my hanger and we're done. Here's the final look. I think this would fit in nicely whether your Halloween aesthetic is rustic, farmhouse, boho, whatever you got going on. If wood isn't your thing, this could easily be made from cardstock too. I love the way this turned down. I hope you like it too. All my supplies are listed in the description box. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.